Hey there, I am Jamie from Stonemaier Games, and I am joined today with my coworker, by my coworker, Susanna. Susanna, why don't you let them know who you are and why you are here today for today's video. Yes, my name's Susanna, and I am the Retailer Relationship Manager here at Stonemaier, and we are going to talk about our favorite nature-themed games today. Yeah, this is a list that I've been wanting to do. I kind of meant to do it during uh, Earth Day month, um, but uh, and I reached out to Susanna for some ideas, and Susanna has, a, a, what, what, can you let them know your background, why, why you love nature science? Yes, yeah. uh, before I started working for Stonemeyer Games, I was a professional gardener for almost 20 years, so um, uh, not um, like mowing grass, but caring for perennials and shrubs and trees um, for homes and businesses and public spaces, and um, plants are just very dear to my heart. Well, I'm excited to do this list. We're each going to do honorable mentions, and then we'll do a top five list. We each have a top five list. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, you have some good criteria here. Do you want to mention your criteria? That's a good way yeah, to start. Great. Yeah, great. So, I went on to BGG uh, for all the games that I considered for this list and made sure that they were listed under theme as either being um, a nature-themed game or an ecology-themed game, which I think was appropriate for this list. And um, artwork played an important role in my selection but gameplay was the most important criteria. Um, and I would say that with just five, it's really hard to pare it down. So I would play any of my top five anytime and really any of my honorable mentions. Two things that I thought about with criteria were should or should I not include games with fantasy themes that had to do with like animals or nature? I decided for my list to say yes to that. Mm -hmm. um, and also I didn't exclude include any games that even if they had a nature or Animal focus. I, I included animals. In Absolutely. Mind. Animal focus. Even if they had that, but the animal edition was kind of abstract, like the Isle of Cats. I love the Isle of Cats, but they're polyomino tiles. I don't think about it as a nature themed game. So I didn't include that on the list as much as I love that game and other games like it. Yes. I didn't lean into fantasy themed very much, but I considered it. And um, yeah, I, I hear you on all of your criteria. Yep. <laughs> We're flexible on this, and anyone oh, yeah. who wants to comment about your favorite games, be as flexible as you'd like as well. Exactly. So let's. Show, why don't you share your honorable mentions, and then okay. I'll share mine. Yeah. Sure. Uh, mine are Arc Nova, Canopy, Dandelions, Ecosystem, Floriferous, Hive, Nimalia, Planted, Renature, and Wingspan Asia. And mine are Wingspan and Wingspan Asia, Honeybuzz, Parks, Cascadia, Tussie Mussie, Etowa, Herbaceous, Floriferous, Evolution, Reef, Barren Park, Sonora, Meadow, Hive, The Whatnot Cabinet, Darwin's Journey, my most recent play, I think, of Nature Theme Game, Savannah Park, and Creature Comforts. Nice. Some, some crossovers already. Some crossovers, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, why don't we start with your number five, Susanna? Okay. Uh, my number five is in your honorable mentions. It's Meadow uh, by Clemens Kaliki, put out by Rebel Games or Rebel Studio. And I love the theme. You are walking in nature and you are making observations. And so it's this, uh, it's really like one of my very favorite things to do in real life is just walk and look. And it takes me a long time to walk sometimes because I'm really looking. But in the game, which is beautiful, it's like a children's storybook art with all these beautiful creatures. Um, oh, and I have the box oh, yeah. here. I will show you. Okay, so this is Meadow. Yeah, I can hold it up. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, so you are building a tableau by chaining together the observations that you're making. And um, you start with a terrain type in your tableau of 10 cards, and then you are drafting in this open draft of four by four grid, you see the board there, with these um, arrow tokens that are your player markers. And so you're choosing, given what's written on the marker, which card in the four by four grid you're going to choose. And um, I haven't seen this mechanic before, but I, I think other people have mentioned some games that it comes from. and. Um, it can be really uh, tricky to get the card you want because other people are drafting too, especially in like a four-player game. You can really lose track of the cards that you're looking for and then have to pivot. And so you're basing your tableau on the symbols that these observation cards give you. And when you play a t card into your tableau, you're actually covering symbols that you've previously received. So you're, you're chaining, but you're also losing symbols and you have to be very clever about how you chain together your symbols to make these um, you know, connecting ecosystems in your tableau. And um, it sort of looks innocent and beautiful, but it's a really tough choice game. And I think it's very thinky for how beautiful it is on the cover. <laughs> There's some envelopes in the box that 
are even connected to things that you might do in, in real life nature? Have you used any of those or opened up any of those? I actually haven't, yeah, um, right. but I do think it's a great uh, little secret. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's inside of them. I just know they're in there. Although they are open in the rule book. They, they go into details in the right. rule book. Yeah. Right, right, right. So that's Meadow, Susanna's number five. My number five is one of the, the two slightly fantasy-leaning games, and the only box that we don't have here today, which is Living Forest. This is a game, a deck building game and an engine building game where you are gathering these animal cards, these kind of magical, mystical animal cards. And unlike most deck building games where you're just drawing a set number of cards, you choose simultaneously with all other players uh, how many cards you're going to choose. So you just draw a card and then you say, okay, I want to draw another card. And at a certain point, you might be forced to stop if you, draw, if you have a certain number of a bad icon. I believe it's three of that bad icon. Um, or you can just stop to, to avoid having um, three or whatever the number is of that bad icon. If you bust, so if you have too many of that bad icon, you only get to take one action that round. Um, if you don't bust, you get to take two actions, two different actions, which feels really good. I like that that push and pull. It reminds me a lot of Quacks of Kremlinburg, another nice. push your luck game that I love. Um, but yeah, the nature of the, the, the game is about a living forest. And there's even a semi-cooperative element where you're trying to uh, manage some, fi some fire tokens that might burn the forest down. So cool. a competitive game, you're still trying to manage that. And uh, yeah, I just I, I, I really enjoy this game. It's one that I played in real life and on Board Game Arena. I'd recommend it in both places. Have you played that one? I have not. Have not? Oh, okay. I'll I show would like that one to. to. Yeah. Thank you. So that's Living Forest, my number five. Cool. Susanna, what's your number four? My number four is Herbaceous Sprouts. So this is a pencil first game and um, they have this whole nature line. Jamie mentioned Herbaceous, I mentioned Floriferous, he also mentioned Floriferous. Yeah. And this is uh, a little bit heavier. I think usually the dice game version of a game is lighter, mm. but this is the dice game version of Herbaceous. And so it adds this element of, um, uh, you, you're, you play gardeners in a community garden, like in Herbaceous, but you're, uh, trying to place your tokens in the community garden, uh, which is broken into set collection groups. So one garden wants all of the same type of herb. One garden wants all different types of herbs. One garden wants sets of herbs. And one garden wants just flowers. So the, my favorite thing is that you have these seed dice, these like beautiful little, um, what's the word for special dice that you like? Like custom dice? Custom dice. Yeah. So yeah. it's custom dice. And they have faces on them of all the herb sprouts, which are adorable. And then one, I think one of the dice, I think the pink one has flowers on it. So you, the head gardener rolls the seed dice and places them on action cards. So it's like a dual draft. So you have the action card, which might have a watering can or a glove or a wheelbarrow or a bag on it. And they all have special actions or a trowel, like the trowel lets you plant flowers. The uh, glove lets you reroll dice. But then you also have the dice that come into your personal wheelbarrow. And it's push your luck in the sense that you want to build the best sets, but other people are competing for the spaces in the garden with more points for bigger sets. So it's like, do you wait and gather more seed dice and build a big set, or do you get those smaller points and just like do ones and twos or whatever the smallest is um, with the seed dice? So it's this fun, like little bit of tension, who's gonna draft the the, the glove with the like tarragon on it and you know you really need tarragon but maybe you can re-roll if you don't have tarragon anyway it just speaks to me on like all these levels and um and there's as with all pencil first games in this line there's a special card that um the first person to do a thing gets in this case it's a glass of lemonade for the first person to put tokens in all four gardens oh, nice. yeah have you played it I'm, so I played Herbaceous, and I must admit, I, when I, I've seen, I've heard this name, I've seen this name, I thought it was a smaller version of right. Herbaceous, not a custom dice stick game. Now yes, I absolutely I should, want to play this game. I should game. teach it to you. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll sounds enjoy amazing. it. Yeah. And I just love set collection, and this is just a fun take on that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. Number four, Herbaceous Sprouts. My number four is my other fantasy-themed game, and this is Everdell which is just oozing with beautiful nature art from yep. Andrew Bosley, who also did the art for Tapestry. So this is a tableau slash engine building game with also worker placement. It has like all of my favorite mechanisms in it, where you're placing these little worker meeples to collect resources and play cards. And there's a really nice sense in this game um, that the... Well, it reminds me a lot of Redwall. I read Redwall as a kid. Oh, Have you read sure. the Redwall books? I actually haven't, but I know what you mean. It feels like I'm building a little society based on animal animal critters. Uh, mm -hmm. And 
Uh, I, I love that feeling of seeing my little village of animal critters grow and develop. And uh, a lot of the cards pair with one another. So there's, if you play one card, then that card might, might say, okay, you get to play this next card for free. And they're tied thematically really well mm -hmm. to each other. Um, and it's, it's a game, like the first time I played this game, I didn't do much because I didn't quite realize that it was trying to extend my round as long as possible. <laughs> Because you can either place a worker or you can play a card, and often the cards, because they lead into other resources, other cards, that's how you extend your round and go a little bit further, push a little bit more. I really like that feeling at Everdell when I'm able to pull it off. Um, and it's just one of those games that win or lose, looking back at my, my little animal village that I've made by the end of the game, feels really satisfying to me. Yes. I'm curious, yeah. do you play with the fool or do you take the fool out? I don't play with any of the mean cards. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a fan. Yeah. I love the game, but I don't play with the fool. <laughs> yeah, I think they're even more with some of the promos and expansions. Oh, if we gosh. draw them, we just toss them and, yeah. and pick another one. Yeah, yeah it's just like not in the spirit of it to me. Exactly. Yeah, same here. So, yeah, Everdell, that's my number four. Sweet. Right. So, my number three is Birdwatcher. And I learned about this game at Geekway Mini uh, back in January um, by uh, Zakir Jaffrey. And the you know the cover just drew me in so we pulled it from the play and win <clears throat> and you play competing uh adventurous nature photographers trying to capture photographs of elusive birds of paradise in papua new guinea so the artwork is stunning it's all of these um illustrations of the uh of all these birds of paradise, which like if you've watched any David Attenborough mm -hmm. nature videos, he loves to show those like the mating dance of the special, you know, bird of paradise. And they're just so unique and and extravagant and amazing. So in your uh, player area, you have a tree and then you have a photo journal. And your goal is to um, bring birds from the joint shared um, open drafting area, which is called the First the jungle and then the clearing. So your goal is to bring them to your tree and then photograph them into your journal. But there are these cool thematic touches because like for instance, this is back in the 19th century when they only had um, the gelatin plate cameras that are really big and kind of loud. And uh, like the shutter would be enough of a, a sound that it would scare a bird. So <laughs> when you photograph a bird from your tree into your journal, but it scares a bird away back into the clearing. So you're going to lose a bird from your, uh, your open hand every time you take a picture. And then that bird uh, becomes startled, which means it's tapped and you can no longer, you personally can no longer retrieve it on that same turn because you have three actions per turn. So someone else can take that bird on the next draft. And the way that you take birds, I love, <laughs> it's so silly. And you have to really lean into it. Like when you play this game, <laughs> you, um, you perform a bird call, and the, the, the call of the bird is written on every card. So whenever we call birds, we'll be like, quonk, and then like the bird. So the bird or birds, all of that species that are not tapped or not startled, whether they're in the clearing or the jungle, will come to your tree, which has a max of six. It can hold a max of six, but I've never called six of any species from there. Um, so it's really fun to, to do the bird calls and then to like make the sets in your journal, but... If you break, if you don't complete a set before, it's like there's a an order in which your sets happen. They have to happen left to right. And if they get broken up by something like a, a publication or a special bird, that set is closed. So it's a kind of interesting limit to set collection, and you have to diversify sets and publications and special birds. Um, so it's a race to basically filling your tableau and yeah, getting the most points. And but you get to interact with all these amazing birds. So. I love it, Bird Watcher. I love the art on this one. I, I this is another one that I, I need to try. Oh yeah, I'm glad we talked about it. Yes. Awesome. So that's Bird Watcher number three for Susanna. My number three is heavily animal-based game, Dog Park. So Dog Park is a game where you are building a kennel of dogs and then taking them on a walk. So it's not just it. It really does tie into the nature theme quite well because it's not just the dogs, but you are actively taking them on a walk through a park. Nice. Um, it includes a few of my favorite mechanisms, which is uh, a tableau building where you're building this tableau of dogs. And uh, every time you go on a walk, you choose some of those dogs to go on a walk and you have to entice them with things that those dogs want. So a dog might want a toy or food. And so you have to gather those things to entice the dog to actually go on the walk with you. 
And then once you choose the dogs to go on a walk, so you're kind of choosing this, this mini engine each round. You can have a bunch of dogs in your kennel, but you're only choosing up to three of them to actually go on a walk. And some of them do things when you choose them to go on a walk, some of them do things during the walk itself. And then you go on this walk and it includes one of my other favorite mechanisms, which is a one-way action selection track where you can move up to, I believe, four spaces forward on this track um, to choose a, a benefit on that track. And then you can't go back. You're just going forward and there's a split path at one point in the walk. Mm. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see it here. Um, there's, a, there's a split path you can take. And you just do this, I believe, four times over the course of the game. You, you gather some dogs, you choose to put them on, your, on, on the leash, you take them on the walk, and then you do it over and over again. And it's just really pleasant and satisfying. I, while I'm more of a cat person than a dog person, the dogs in this game are adorable. I'm often, uh, in fact, this is one of the signs of a, a good theme to me where I am dr enticed by specific dogs, not just by the mechanisms yes. on those dogs. Yes. And so I often just gather dogs that look fun to, to be in my kennel, in my group, yes. my pack. I love yeah. that. Have you played Dog Park? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Dog Park, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy Very it. This cool. is my number three favorite Yay. nature themed game. All right. My number two. Okay. I'm going to just talk about it for a second before I show you. <laughs> because I, I think this really does fit, although it is an abstract game. But the theme of this game is what drew me to pick it up off the shelf and buy it. So, um, so I'm wearing ginkgo earrings. Ginkgos are my absolute favorite leaf. My husband, for Valentine's Day, like 10 years ago, had a bespoke iron railing made for our front steps with ginkgo leaves on it. And it just, like to me, it's the, one of the most beautiful forms in nature. Um, so this game is Ginkopolis. And the theme of this game is that you are city building in the future you are trying to design the city to be in harmony with the principles of nature. And they are basing these principles on the um, oldest living gymnosperm, the ginkgo. And gymnosperms are like the most primitive form of seed bearing plant. So cycads, ferns, and ginkgos. Ginkgos are basically living fossils. And so they're theming the, this future city building game on the success of the ginkgo sort of being this long lasting enduring tree. So that's kind of where the theme ends. Except that po points are ginkgos, like the little point chits are ginkgo leaves, which I love. Uh -huh. But it is an abstract, and it's an area control engine building game, which is a very cool combination. So the mechanics are um, weird to teach, but once you get it, it makes a lot of sense. But basically, you're, you're building a shared city out of tiles, but you have in your hand, which you're drafting around the table, um, passing and drafting, you have in your hand cards that relate to those tiles. And if you play a card with a tile and the card is for a tile that already exists, you cover that tile with your tile that you're playing. So that's how you can kind of gain the area majorities. You can kick people off of those districts by um, overbuilding and constructing up. Or you can build out and just kind of sprawl your city out. And at the end of the game, you're just uh, scoring majorities for the red, the yellow, and the blue districts, all of which give you either um, red gives you resources, blue gives you tiles, and yellow gives you points uh, as you're playing. And then you also have some engine building cards from the cards that relate to the tiles that you've covered, which then come into your tableau. And those are really helpful because they'll say, okay, every time you construct a floor in this building, you'll get a resource. Or every time you urbanize and sprawl outward, you'll get a tile or a resource. But then there are these bigger, when you get into the like, 15 through 20 level tiles, they give you end game scoring. For every resource you have on a yellow tile, you'll get a point at the end, or for every, I don't remember all of the conditions, but it is a very dynamic game. It doesn't feel mean. I think area control games can often feel mean. It just, it feels dynamic, because you're all drafting cards, you're all um, sharing the same board and building the board together, and uh, I just think it's a blast. This is one that I played very early on in my modern gaming hobby, mm -hmm. and I couldn't quite figure it out. Like, I played a full game of it. it. Is I understood odd. it, but it was yeah. It is yeah. very odd. Uh -huh. I I I know that. Um, <laughs> I think I think you would absolutely get it now. Like okay. pick it up, and I would be glad to teach you again and see if it resonates a little differently. Does it really play in forty-five minutes? Yeah. Okay. Well. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah sure. I'll try that again. Cool. Ginkopolis. Yes. Susanna's number two. My number two is 
probably the newest game on this list for me, and this is Earth. Earth is a game where you're building your own little island, another tableau building game where you're building an island of ideally 16 cards, four by four by four grid. Um, that is the end game trigger. There are so many cards in this game that represent flora and fauna and different things that you might find in nature. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I love this game. I, I love this feeling of building an island, not just putting cards on the table to build this tableau, cards that relate to each other in different ways, but also putting things on those cards. I like to see it, it, you can put uh, tokens on the cards that represent kind of trees or growth. So there's this vertical element that you're building up. There's also tokens you can put on the cards that re represent, what are they, so not soil. Um, uh, sprouts. Sprouts, yeah, sprouts. Uh, so I love putting those. So I, I love seeing my little island grow uh, in 3D, not just on the table. I also love just mechanically about this game, the simultaneous nature of it. And that whenever I take an action, if I choose an action, all players take a weaker version of that action mm -hmm. and all players activate the color of card, all cards of a certain color, if they want, um, of whatever that action is. So if I take the red action, all players get to activate all red cards in their tableau that they want to. So the game flows really, really well. And I don't mind, in fact, with a lot of these nature themed games in particular, I don't mind that there isn't much player interaction. Mm -hmm. It's enough interaction for me to look across the table and see what cool things Suzanne is building and know that I have a cool thing that I'm building that Susanna can't hurt. I, I, I wanna build my own little private island in yep. this game. Um, I love Earth, and I have a feeling Susanna might have some things to say about it as right. well. <laughs> Thank you. This is my number one. <laughs> yeah, okay, this game um, kind of blew my socks off. When I got the teach and I learned that it was all plants and fungi and terrain, I was in just, I was beyond delighted. And a couple things to add. I love all the things Jamie said. I just read recently in the rule book that um, the designer says, uh, let me see if I can find the quote. Uh, this is an open world engine builder. And I think that is the perfect description for this game, which makes sense because the designer said it. And <laughs> he knows what he's doing. So this is Maxime Tardif and it's um, Inside Up Games. And apparently uh, his girlfriend said, could you just please design me a game about plants? And so he went wild. like the variety of plants and fungus that you can see in this game is astonishing. Every card is different and the art for every card is stunning. And I know that Connor at Inside Up handpicked every single piece of art and then Jenna at Inside Up wrote flavor text for every single card. And so there's this, just the beauty of it is amazing. But then you realize that there are, you can specialize, you can go really heavy into compost, you can go really heavy into trees, you can go really heavy into um, sprouts. like or a couple of those, or you can diversify and just have a really broad engine. Um, but because it's open world, you always have options. You just, you are never stuck in this game. And I love that when um, you choose an action, I'm always gonna be doing something and choosing something and gaining something. It's so positive um, and it's, and what you have at the end is just a beautiful um, tableau. And I don't know if you mentioned, but you can play into your own tableau scoring condition cards that are just for you which is kind of fun and some of them are spatial. Like if you have this card with um, a mushroom symbol at every orthogonal side, you get X number of points per card. Or you can follow uh, a path of sun symbols without doubling back and get points for every one of those. And then in addition to that, you have a shared group of fauna objectives. So it's like you've got all the plants and fungus and terrain, but then the fauna are what give you end game points. So all the animals that would like live on the island. Yeah. So you're, it's a race to those points, which is really fun. So there's like many, many avenues for scoring and exploration. And I would add with all these goals that Susanna mentioned, they're, they're very satisfying to go after the, with the public goals and your private goals. But again, kind of like what I mentioned with Dog Park, I am intrinsically motivated or sometimes just to say, oh, I have three mushrooms. I'm gonna try to make as like a whole yep. island of mushrooms yep. if I can. Or, uh, and hopefully you have a scoring yeah. card that exactly. like really <laughs> gives you that. But if you don't, yeah. it's still fun. It's yeah, I was so satisfied at the end of my first play. Didn't do well, but had like the best time. But I've actually, this is a game that works with my brain and I've probably won it like 50% of the time for all my plays, which is pretty high for me as a win rate. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, love it. So that was my number two, Susanna's number one. I love the description as an open world engine building. Yeah. That's really cool. Susanna brought a copy. She brought a copy of Earth as well. We both have it. 
My number one, it was a very tough decision here because I really love Earth and I love what this game does too in similar ways, and that is Ark Nova. This was on your honorable mentions, yes. I think, yeah? So Ark Nova is in many ways kind of a longer version of Earth because it doesn't have the simultaneous play. Mm -hmm. But I love the variety of choices in Ark Nova. In Ark Nova, you're building a zoo. Um, you are kind of uh, going after two different things, two different types of points. You're going after income. You're trying to draw people into your zoo, but you're also trying to work on conservation. Sometimes you're even releasing animals from your zoo back into the wild. Uh, conservation is a major part of the game. And I think without that, the game wouldn't have worked nearly as well for mm -hmm. me. Uh, but like Earth, like Dog Park, one of the big things that I love about this game and how it's related to nature are the sheer number of the sheer variety and number of cards in the game. Mm -hmm. So many different animals, so many different different features to add to the zoo. I'm more, mostly more interested in animals, but again, I'm I'm so intrinsically motivated in this game to go after certain animals, animals that look interesting, and there's always a payoff. Every animal offers something um, immediate, like an immediate benefit, uh, often an ongoing benefit. Uh, or like an income benefit and often an end game benefit as well. So every card feels good in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. um, and even just the uh, playing a card, this is a game where you can say, okay, here's an elephant. That elephant is going to be really difficult to play. I need to meet these different con conditions to get there. I need to save up these resources to get it. And then you actually play it and it feels really good. The, you, you worked on that. You, could, you can see that goal and you can accomplish it if you work towards it. Yeah, Arc Nova. What, what do love you think Arc about it? I mean, yeah, I love yeah. Arc Nova and I think... The only thing that kept it out of my top five was that it was in a zoo and not in wild nature, but the yeah. whole conservation and just the animals themselves, of course, make it possible, and that's why I put it in my honorable mentions. Yeah. My friend David, uh, who I play this game with a lot online, has a word for like the elephants and the, the bigger animals. He calls them demandimals, because they <laughs> are very demanding. And then we have the giant demanda, that's the panda. And there are others, of course, that lean into that, but it's just... It's like, oops, here's a demand animal. What am I going to do with it? And uh, I'm not great at it, but I love it. Yeah. This is one that I pre-ordered the expansion for. It adds some new cards, a lot of marine biology. Yeah. And so I'm very curious to see what that does. I'm excited to play that. In fact, I'm intentionally not playing it for now because I want to play it really fresh Sweet. when that expansion comes out. That'll be yeah. great. Arc Nova, that's my number one. Yeah. So Susanna has a bonus to add to this list. She has a few games, two specific games, that uh, nature themed games that are coming up soon, and I am so curious to hear about them. Yeah, so I learned about both these games recently, and um, yeah, I cannot wait. I don't know about the second one's uh, release date, but we'll mention it anyway. So the first one is called Forest Shuffle. The designer's name is Koch, K O S C H, um, just one word, and it's put out by Lookout. It's gonna be Lookout's um, fall, like big release this year. Last year it was Atiwa, which mm -hmm. I love, and I didn't think to put that because. I mean, how could I not have put a Tiwa? <laughs> it's got to at least be on my honorable mentions. <laughs> like, I love Uva and I love that game. Um, but it is, okay, I saw it on Tony Boydell's Board Game Geek blog called Everyone Needs a Shed, which is a great blog. And he described it as innovation meets wingspan meets race for the galaxy in a combo-tastic hand management tableau builder. And the basis of your tableau is all of these trees but you're going to be tucking cards under it, with, which are animals and insects and other plants. And then there are these decisions about where you tuck and how you tuck. And then it's a card values, set collection, um, and other, as he says, forest habitat appropriate channels. So it is releasing this fall. I'm pretty sure it'll be at Essen. I don't know other than that um, if it will be released prior to that. And then the other one that um, I learned about, the artwork is what drew me in. It's called Loam put out by Cardboard Revolution. It's currently on GameFound, probably for the next two or so weeks from the date of us filming this. And um, so this is another card building game, but the art was made by the designer of the game who is a soil ecologist named Max Helmberger. And for his students, he would make these claymation videos of soil diversity and ecology, and I love I love soil. I love building soil. I love the concept of how soil is made with sand, silt, clay, lo uh, hummus, which makes loam, and then you have so many microorganisms. So hopefully we can get a photo of one of these amazing um, microorganisms made in clay that uh, form the basis of your, of your game. Now, I honestly don't know a ton about the gameplay. It looks fascinating, but um, I can't wait to learn more. And honestly, I've never crowdfunded a game, but I think this might be my first one. Oh, so Exciting. Yeah, exciting. so that is loam. A game of soil biodiversity. Some love. And Forest Shuffle was forest the other one. Forest Shuffle, yes. 
Awesome. I'm yeah. excited about those games. Let us know. Oh, thank you, Susanna, so much for joining me on this video. Most Thanks. importantly, I really appreciate that. And please let us know in the comments if you have a favorite nature-themed game. And if you can think of one that's not on our list, this is a little tough list to search for. I bet we missed a big game that has a beautiful nature theme. Yep, I'm sure. Let us know in the comments. We'd, we'd love to hear about it. And maybe we've played it, maybe not. Yes. All right. Thanks. Bye.